Today's episode is brought to you by Career Academy and their amazing exclusive offer to the project management for the masses listeners. To obtain PMP, CAPM, and Prince2 certification training, up to 257 PDUs, earn up to 30 college credits, and have unlimited access to over 1,100 courses on project management, business skills, IT, and cybersecurity for only $29, visit pmforthemasses.com slash academy. And yes, for an annual fee of $29, you get access to all 1,100 courses and more. To learn more, visit pmforthemasses.com slash academy. Project managers, have you ever felt like you should get that promotion or a better job? Start a business. Write that book. Have you ever felt you were made for more but didn't know where to start? Welcome to the PM for Masses podcast with your host, Caesar Abade. Learn from the experts. Think outside the box. Have a voice. Network and be extraordinary. PM for the Masses podcast. Well, hello again. My name is Cesar Abade, your host. And this show, as you know, is your weekly reminder that your career matters more than your job and that your life is a project and you are the manager. Whether you work for a company or for yourself, your job stability is really just your ability to land your next gig. So join me in practicing intentional, planned and value adding relevance starting right now. Today, we're going to talk about estimates and a project by definition. And I always talk about this here. A project creates something new, something that wasn't there before. It's, it's an adventure. It's a quest. It's, it's, a, it's a jump in the dark, if you will. <laughs> something that people have never done before. And it doesn't matter how small or how mundane your project is. It is something new. So it is very natural and sometimes even mandatory that you're able to estimate how long it is going to take to complete or how long it's going to cost and maybe some other estimates associated with this project. There are people paying for it many times and they want to know how much it's going to cost. They want to know how long it's going to take. Um, maybe it's a um, construction project that needs to be done before election date, for example. <laughs> so you need to be able to estimate this. But the problem is, as you may imagine, that it is impossible to estimate those numbers with precision Because after all, as I just said, this thing that you're about to take on has never been done before. So it's not like you can go back and look at at a history book or, 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 or a textbook that will tell you exactly how long and how much it's going to cost you. Now, the topic of estimates in project management is very hot, especially right now. Especially right now when, uh, you know, software development really almost like took over the the discipline of project management. And because software development is a lot more flexible than construction, for example, which is what originated project management in the first place, the the way you estimate things um, is, let's say, it's more open for discussion. So there's a lot of discussion going on right now. And there are many different approaches to it. So to discuss her take on project estimates, today I bring back to the PM for the Masses podcast my friend, Johanna Rothman, to talk about estimates and her new book, which is called Predicting the Unpredictable, Pragmatic Approaches to Estimating Cost and Schedules. So let's get started. Special guest coming up next, pmforthemasses.com, pmforthemasses.com. Johanna Rothman, known as the Pragmatic Manager, helps organizational leaders see problems and risks in their product development. She helps them recognize potential risks seize opportunities, and remove impediments. Johanna has written many books on the topic of management and project management, including Manager Job Search, Hiring Geeks That Fit, Manage a Project Portfolio, Manage It, Your Guide to Modern Pragmatic Project Management, Behind Closed Doors, Secrets of Great Management, Hiring the Best Knowledge Workers, Techies and Nerds, The Secrets and Science of Hiring Technical People, And finally, predicting the unpredictable, pragmatic approaches to estimate costs and schedules, which we will talk about today. And Johanna is talking to me today from her home. Good afternoon, Johanna. How are you, my friend? I'm great, thanks. How about you? (laughs) I'm doing well. It's great to have you on the show. You know, I feel like I could have you every week and we would have a fantastic (laughs) show. There's always so much to talk about. 
Well, I think every week would be a little much, but I, I love being on the show with you. <laughs> Thank you so much again for making the time. Now, you've sent me a copy of your um, Predicting the Unpredictable book. And I have to say, it was quite an interesting read because I'm not in 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 the software development or uh, I'm not developing software, right? And those are not my projects. So I learned a lot by reading your book, both about estimates and also about the this industry. So it was a very good book. Thank you for sending it to me. So I thought maybe we could talk about that. I would love to. So Johanna, are you familiar with the no estimates movement? I am. Okay, so what estimates. What would you like to know? Estimates or no estimates? So if I had my way, if I ran the world, we would not estimate anything. And I know there are senior managers out there who are saying, this woman is nuts. So it's really important to say, what kind of an estimate are you doing for what purpose? A lot of times people ask for estimates when they want a ballpark, right? They want an idea of when this project could be done. And the more you work in an agile way, which is part of the no estimates movement, the less you need to know that because you're always checking back with a sponsor or at least the product owner to say, is this what you wanted? Am I done with this yet? And if you are checking back every day for small stories and at least every two weeks for a demo, you actually don't need an estimate. You can stop the project at any time. Now, that does not help the organizations that want to do year-long budgeting, which you and I can talk about another time. Um, I have yet to see a year-long budget work. On the other hand, it does make sense to plan quarter by quarter to say, where do we want to invest our money? So if you have an idea of what you might be able to get done in a, in a quarter, or even if you have to do year-long budgeting, then you do what I call a gross estimate, right? You make an estimate and you say, you either give a three date that's possible, likely, and pessimistic, right? Those are the three dates. Or you do a percentage confidence. Um, it's 50% in June. It's 75% in September. It's 90% in December. So when people hear something like that, they say, oh, so June is possible, but it's not very likely. And you can say, yes, that's exactly what I, what I want to say. Now then, as you finish features, and especially if you make your features small and you use continuous integration, which is to say you integrate the feature all the time into the code base, you don't have to do a lot of estimating. You have to make your feature smaller, and some people think that that's estimating. I don't think it is. I think it's feedback to the product owner. But you you institute, you, you I should say, develop feature by feature by feature, and the product owner gets to say when you've done enough. So you might have to do a gross estimate and, and give your organization some idea. On the other hand, um, trying to estimate all of the detailed features for a given software project is beyond hopeless. So don't do that, right? Instead, deliver working product, which builds trust, and then um, then your, your managers actually say, oh, okay, I understand why you didn't want to give us an estimate, but I also understand where you are. Does that help? It does. It does. And, uh, you know, I know there's um, people in, in the audience who are not in the, the software industry and they're in construction or some of the other industries where you don't have these flexibilities. So they're probably uh, shaking their heads right now. So just to just <laughs> well, to be, be sure, just to make clear, we're talking specifically about uh, this one slice of project management, correct? Yes, software. And that's because software is learning, right? When, when In construction, you learn as you go along, but you also have a lot of guidelines that are very well known, right? If you want to um, build a house, there's a cost per square foot that's pretty standard given the the area of the country that you're in, right? There are pretty standard things. The problem with software is we're always doing new stuff. We never repeat ourselves. So we don't have that body of knowledge about 
um, a hundred square foot room cost this much? Mm. We don't know because it could look like a hundred square foot room and it could turn into a 5,000 square foot house. That's the problem with software. We don't know. Mm-hmm. Now, that's that's great. But pe- people are still going to come to you as a project manager and ask you, you know, how long is this project going to take or how much is this going to cost? So what do you do then? So I actually say, um, what kind of, what what do you want to use this estimate for? And if they say yearly planning, I say, fine, I'm going to take a day with the team or half a day with the team, give you our gross estimate, and then because we're developing in an agile way, you will have a chance all through the project to say, I do not want to invest any more in this project. We have done enough, right? Or um, please invest more. Please keep going until you hit the release criteria. So I think that that's the really different piece. When you're building a house, it, it does not make sense to build a house halfway, you're not going to pour the foundation, do the frame. Well, you might do this if you're speculating on houses and then wait around until you have a buyer. But with software, we can build what we call a working skeleton because it's software. It's not hard. Mm-hmm. And we can say, um, here's here's a number of features. Here's how they work together. And um, if you see enough, uh, well, if you say, we, I don't want to see any more because this has no value, then fine, we won't work on any more. Mm. On the other hand, if you say, I've, I, I do not see enough value for us to be able to sell this or use this or whatever, then you can keep going. And that's really the key with no estimates. Um, one of the things you have to do is work in small enough chunks so that everybody can get... Um, so that all the software people can continuously integrate the software and you have to finish features as part of a working skeleton. I should say a walking skeleton is what it's called. Um, That way you can see the entire application from front to back. You're not implementing by architecture, but you're not implementing the platform and then the middleware and then the GUI. You always implement some GUI, some middleware and some platform so that you can see features from front to back as opposed to um, seeing architectural components. That does not help you. Mm-hmm. So I guess if you want to add another feature, then that's another point of estimate right there. Okay, well, yeah, it's got, probably going to take us three weeks to do this one. And and that right. way you, you estimate as you go instead of trying to give an answer for the whole project because you don't even know what it's going to be, right? Exactly. And you might... Um, I really like much smaller features. So if I'm talking about a three-week, quote, feature, end of quote, that's probably a feature set. Mm -hmm. So there's the very simplest thing you could do that adds value. There's the next thing. There's the next thing. And when you're working in very small features, it's very easy to keep the work in progress low. And one of the things that we want to do Um, is we want to finish features as opposed to start many features at a time and then finish them, you know, when it takes a long time. If anything, we want the entire team to work on one feature, get it to done, so the product owner, the sponsor, somebody can look at it and then say, yes, I I like that feature, or no, what were you thinking? Because the more time you spend on a feature, the more invested you are in it, and the less you want it, you want to change it. So you want to consider how do I how do I make my features smaller, show a steady stream of progress, um, and and keep the customer, client, business owner, sponsor, product owner, whomever you have engaged. Just a quick break here to talk about our sponsor, Career Academy. The folks at Career Academy have put together an incredible deal for us here at PM for the Masses. If you are in project management or in business or IT or cybersecurity and are looking for training or to get a certification such as the PMP or the CEPM, you cannot, and I repeat, you cannot miss this incredible opportunity. 
for just $29 annually, Career Academy is opening up access for us to an enormous library of over 1,100 courses, which you will have unlimited access to for the whole year. These courses include complete PMP certification training, other PM training such as CAPM, Prince2, risk management, schedule and cost control, quality management, and many others. If you already have a certification, you can get up to, and get ready for this, 257 PDUs by signing up for this unbelievable offer. I've been around PM training for a long time and I've never seen anything like this. Also, Career Academy is certified, so you can earn up to 30 college credits and even university certificates for the courses that you complete. All of this for just $29 per year. Now, this is a temporary offer, so visit pmfromthemasses.com slash academy to sign up. Again, for over 1,100 courses on the PMP exam, CAPM, Prince2, Agile, CompTIA, Digital Forensics, Cisco Training, Cybersecurity, and many others, plus 257 PDUs, college credits, and much, much more for only $29 per year, visit pmfromthemasses.com slash academy. The address again is pmfromthemasses.com slash academy. Now, back to the show. So, Johanna, one of the things that happened here in the podcast, I mean, there's a lot of benefits to myself because I learned a lot, but the downside is that people um, are exposed to my level of ignorance. <laughs> and I'm going to ask you a question that might be uh, a very silly question. So, what is an inch pebble? Oh, an inch pebble is a word I I thought I had created back in the 90s um, when I said instead of milestone, I want inch pebbles. <laughs> I get it. I okay. want it, right? So, because um, a lot of people like to estimate or, or have work at the time that was a week or two weeks long. And I knew from my work that if I tried to estimate something that was a week long, I was just as likely to go for two weeks as I was for a week. So in my own work, I started to use, um, and I had done this back in the 70s when I first started to work as a professional developer. I said, I have to break everything down so I have something I get to deliver every single day. Um, maybe two days if it's a really complicated thing, but that's why I really like inch pebbles. And when I was teaching other people project management, remember I started to manage projects back way, way, way before we had electronic tools. Um, we had blackboards. We didn't even have whiteboards back when I started to manage <laughs> projects. So I would say to people, let's just plan what we're going to deliver every single day this week. And then we can replan again next week. And if you, if you know that there's stuff you want to do next week, we'll put it in the parking lot or we'll, we'll have a little, uh, a little thing for next week. But let's not worry about next week. Let's figure out every single thing we have to do this week. What, what are we going to deliver Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? And when I did that with other people, they all said, um, this is in service of this milestone because we, we talked about milestones at the time. And I said, but here are inch pebbles. Well, it turns out I did not create that term. Some guy in the Air Force in the 40s created that term. <laughs> so I just don't know who he is. So what is the 90% done that you talk about, like a syndrome? <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, that's where you finish 90% of the project and you have the other 90% left to go. <laughs> um, I have a very funny story from when I was first starting work as a programmer. Um, this was my very first summer out of school. I had, a t I had work to do that I thought was um, four weeks long. So I blatantly said to my boss, it'll take me four weeks. And at the end of the first week, I was 25% done. At the end of the second week, I was 50% done. At the end of the third week, I was 75% done. Now, you and I both know that I had no idea where, we, where I was. <laughs> and at the end of the fourth week, I was 90% done. The fifth week, I was 92% done. The sixth week, I was 92.5% done. <laughs> and that's when my boss took pity on me and said, Johanna, do you have any idea how long it's going to take you to finish this? And I said, no. Would you like to see all my experiments? 
He said, well, yes, but would you like some help in figuring out how to do this? And I said, yes, because this is horrible. Um, and that's when I came up with the inch pebbles. That's when I, I realized that uh, whatever units you estimate in, you are likely to be late in, <laughs> right? So if you estimate four weeks, it could easily take you eight weeks to finish this thing. That's because we are we are pretty good at estimating really short-term stuff. We are really bad at estimating longer-term stuff. So just think about, I don't know what the winter was like for you this past winter, mm -hmm. but I live in the Boston area. It was horrible. And I got to the point where um, there I had appointments uh, and I w normally it would take me 25 minutes to get to this appointment. I was starting to leave over an hour in advance because I could not depend on the traffic. And that's exactly the problem when you try and estimate stuff that's farther out. You don't know what other things are going to come in. You don't know who you have to work with. You don't know if you if someone's going to ask you to multitask, which invalidates everything. So the 90% problem says, if I try and estimate something that's that big, what do I need to do so I have smaller interim milestones and I don't have... 90% done and then still have an, the other 90% left to do. Mm -hmm. Does this have to do with confidence ranges? Because you talk about confidence range in the book. I have found that that kind of a way to talk to managers about what the estimate is, is a very helpful way. People understand percentage confidence, right? They, they understand because... Our weather reporters have been talking about percentage confidence, right? So if you have a big storm in the winter, a big storm in the in the summer, they'll say, we have this percent confidence that it will arrive on Sunday night or it will be this big or something like that. And when senior managers hear a percentage confidence along with an estimate, they all of a sudden realize you're not trying to weasel out of an estimate. You're trying to give them the best possible information. And that's a totally different thing, right? When you try and give people the best possible information, they respect you for it, as opposed to weaseling out of an estimate. They do not respect you for that. So uh, when you think about the 90% done uh, problem, it's related to a percentage confidence because if you try and estimate something that's three months long, well, it could be six months. That's a very different thing. Maybe it'll get done in two months, but you don't really know until you actually start to do it and learn what's going on. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was reading this part in the book, I don't know if it's uh, <laughs> a bad analogy, but what made me think was when my dad had cancer and the doctor told me that, you know, there is a 25% confidence that he'll make it to five years. You know, ah. he actually made it. So it's not such a, uh, okay. you know, such a okay. <laughs> but, but, uh, you know, he gave me an estimate for how long he was going to make it for and also a confidence level. So is, is that kind of a, an analogy there? Or? Yeah, I think it is because, um, I mean, I think that doctors have less knowledge of what an estimate really is. Because everybody, everybody's body responds differently. Right. We're not learning in the same sense that when we create a software product, we're learning. Right. Yeah. Right? All so, our knowledge is break down at some point. But it, yeah. I, that's what but I, I think. It's, yeah, in that sense. Yeah, I think it's very similar. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Um, now, let's say you need, you're asked to estimate a program, a yeah. collection of projects. And now it seems, to, to me, it seems like now you're, challenge has multiplied, you know, or, or grown exponentially because now you have <laughs> guess upon guess upon guess. So it, does it really mean anything? So, um, yeah, it, it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> um, what I have, what I suggest, I'm writing a book about agile and lean program management. And what I'm suggesting to people is, yes, there's a way to estimate programs. It's as good as we can make it. And, I prefer to say, what's your target date? Because, or what's your budget? Because almost everybody says, um, we want it by this time. 
And if you use an agile or an incremental approach to your pro- to your program, you can finish features and then say, you know, we just did three features and it's only been, it took us two months. I don't think we're getting 150 in six months. But you can actually use a little bit of history to say, here's what we can do. So I prefer to work to a target of either date or or scope or budget. But working to a target of all three is an overconstrained project. And that's just, I mean... They're asking for people to um, to incur technical debt, to take um, to take shortcuts, to not do their best work in order to meet the date with a scope, and that's um, I think that that's very uh, unwise, shall we say? Mm-hmm. Very good. And uh, one thing that also caught my eye here is um, you talk about when people ask you for an estimate, you you may want to tell them that you need maybe three iterations or or four, you know, to be able to yeah. estimate. So uh, how how does that help you? So especially if they want me to estimate something big, I want to have a little history of how much I've done so far. Right? How much should we do in the first iteration? How much should we do in the second? Have we learned about how to right-size our stories so we can develop a steady stream of flow of finished features into the code base? This is actually really important. If, if the team ever gets stuck, if the team is not able to finish features on a regular basis, then the project manager the scrum master, the coach, the facilitator, whomever it is, needs to understand why. Why is a team stuck? Sometimes a team doesn't have the information it needs. Sometimes a team is dependent on something over there, right? Sometimes the entire environment is just wrong. So it's very difficult to give an accurate estimation without having a little history with the team. And if the team is new to working with each other, the team has to learn how to work together. You know, you and I have done podcasts before, so we have a pretty good idea of how to work together. And on this, I don't know what you're going to do for editing, but our, our listeners should know we had some technical dis- difficulties <laughs> on this podcast. And if Caesar manages to make it great, it's because he did great post-production <laughs> editing. And this is how projects work too. And if you and I did not have the trust to know that, yeah, we can make it work, um, we would we would have trouble. But in projects, people have to trust each other to get the work done or have to trust each other to know how to work together. This is a non-trivial problem. And that's the that a, right there is the um a huge um uh, what do I want to say? It's a huge component of delay in software projects. If I don't trust you to do your work the same way I do mine, how can I know that we're actually going to have a finished feature into the code base? Right. It's it's a real problem. Yeah. Now that really made sense to me. You know, working with because you don't know how fast people work, how competent they are. They might not be able to finish what you asked me to do. They might not and, have you know. Yeah. And you don't know that until you do you work with them a little bit. And in case of agile environments, you know, a few iterations and see how fast they do things, how well they work together. Uh, things that they don't know how to do. So if uh, if a feature requires the kind of lo- knowledge, you can get back to the sponsor and say, "Listen, um, we need uh, we need to hire someone." <laughs> things Maybe. Like that. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, you just don't know until you until you try, and that's why providing um, an upfront estimate is. I understand why managers want this. I totally understand. But that doesn't mean I can give you a good one or certainly not give you what you want. Right. Now, this is fantastic. Now, um, as, I, as I mentioned at the, at the beginning here, this book was a great read for me because I, you know, it, it's it's outside of my scope here of, of work, you know, to, to be dealing with these <laughs> issues. Our projects are shorter and, you know, and it's it's a different kind of environment we're not doing dealing with software as much so it was really interesting i had to i had to look up some of the terms here um and and i learned a lot so i really recommend if you're listening right now and you've seen i'm sure you've seen blog posts talking about estimates 
there I've been uh, to forums and message boards where people are actually arguing with each other over this topic. <laughs> uh, and they, they get really passionate about this. So, oh, yes, they yeah. do. <laughs> so, Joanna, your book is, is a great introduction to this topic. And, uh, and you, not only that, but also you, it's, it's, uh, there's a lot of uh, strategies as well on, on how to handle these types of requests. I mean, how long this project is going to take? You know, here's how you can answer that question. And I thought that was really, really valuable. <laughs> Joanna, if people want to get the book and, uh, and get in touch with you, where should they go? So they should start at my website. J Rothman, J R O T H M A N dot com. The book is available where all fine books are sold, um, electronic and print. And if they have questions, they should email me. I would love to speak with people. And I vouch for that because she, uh, Johanna, always answers my emails very quickly. So I don't know if I'm on her speed dial or what, but <laughs> she's on the ball. <laughs> So, Joanna, thank you. Joanna, thank you so much for your time tonight. And uh, when the next book comes out, I'd love to have you back on. Well, thank you so much. I would love to be here. You are listening to the PM for the Masses podcast. All right. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Johanna Rothman there on the topic of project estimates. Now, if you go on Twitter, especially, and you search for the hashtag no estimates, hashtag no estimates you will see that there are many discussions on this topic, very heated discussions on this topic. People are very passionate about this. Some people say you shouldn't estimate at all. Other people say you should do as good a job as you can. Um, and then, and let's say if you agree that estimates are good, then how do you do that? Then there's this camp that believes it should be done this way. And then there are people who believe it should be done the, another way. So it's a very, very um, interesting topic of discussion. And um, any, any Google search will, will help you um, find some of these discussions. So that's why I recommend you read Johanna's book. I think it's a very sober uh, approach to this topic um, in a way that uh, she, uh, you know, as, as it was clear during our conversation, um, the main question is, okay, uh, what is the point of an estimate? You know, is it... Uh, is this estimate useful to the person who's asking? And how do we make sure that when we do provide an estimate that it is um, useful to the person who's asking? So I really recommend, again, the name of the book is Predicting the Unpredictable, Pragmatic Approaches to Estimating Costs and Schedules. And you can find the link to this book on the show notes for today's episode, which you can find at pmforthemasses.com slash 97. Again, pmforthemasses.com slash 97 because today is episode 97. And as you may realize, we are quickly approaching episode 100, which is which I'm really excited about. Now, before I go today, I just wanted to talk to you about two things. Number one is that you can still get uh, the audio version of my book, Project Management for You, for free if you buy the Kindle version of it on amazon.com or .ca or .co.uk or whatever part of the world you're in. And to do that is very simple. You just go to projectmanagementforyou.com and follow the steps there. Basically, I want you to buy the book on Amazon and send me the receipt and I'll send you the files, the audio files for the book that way. So if you like podcasts, which I'm guessing that you do because you're listening, still listening to me <laughs> right now. Uh, I think that's a great opportunity. And I am going to be raising the price of this book on Amazon. I'm not sure exactly by how much, but within the week or so, I will be raising the book. So if you want to buy this at $4.99 and get the audiobook for free, this is the week to do so. And again, you go to projectmanagementforyou.com or you can go to the show notes for today's episode at uh, pmforthemasses.com slash 97. If you go to pmforthemasses.com, the book is right there on the sidebar of the website. It's, you can't miss it. It's the first thing you see. And finally, before we close out the show today, just wanted to draw your attention once again to Career Academy, who is the sponsor of today's episode. Career Academy has put together an, an amazing offer for the PM for the Masses community. They really, they, they sponsored the show in the past. They were able to gauge the response that that they got from us and uh, they went all out with this offer. So for $29 uh, a year, you get access to pretty much their whole catalog of over 1100 courses on IT, cybersecurity, project management, business skills, and a variety of other things. So 
If you are into project management, which I think you are, <laughs> this offer includes over 600 project management courses, okay, including training for the PMP, the PMI Agile Certified Practitioner, the CAPM, and the PMI Risk Management Professional Certifications. So if taking a certification uh, exam this year is one of your goals, uh, you can beat it for $29, $29, right? So you get all these courses. I tell you a little bit more about these courses. Um, the, these are on-demand training, so you can access these videos at any time, 24 seven. You get over 10,000 review questions to assess your understanding of the training. You get certificates of completion, okay, provided by Career Academy and also by the American Business and Technology University. So these are university credits. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty interesting how they do that. Um, you get immediate access to the courses, um, if you want to watch the, the courses on mobile, on your phone or your tablet, it is, um, it is possible to do so as well. And if you're not interested in getting a certification, let's say if you already had a certification, you can get up to 257 PDUs or contact hours. And P uh, Career Academy is a, is a recognized PMI REP. So you, you are able to claim uh, the time that you spend taking these courses as PDUs and all of this for $29 per year. It's an amazing offer. There's a lot, a lot to it. So I recommend you go to project management. Uh, sorry, I, I recommend you go to pmforthemasses.com slash academy, which is going to take you to a specially designed landing page on the Career Academy website that's dedicated to us. You're going to see our logo there and you'll be able to take advantage of this offer for $29 a year. Again, the link for this for this offer is pmforthemasses.com slash academy. And you can find a, a longer description of all the courses in the show notes for today's episode at pmforthemasses.com slash 97. And this is what I had for you today. I hope you enjoyed another episode of the show. And I talk to you again next time. And until then, my friends, remember that life is a project and you are the manager. Ciao, ciao. Thank you for listening to the PM for the Masses podcast. Tune in next week for more great ideas on how to manage your projects better and truly stand out in your industry. PMforthemasses.com.